Hello, good people. Welcome to the second episode of Preparation Parley. As the original poster had gone out during the course of the day, you know what questions are to be addressed. So let's get to them straight away. Questions to be taken up in today's video. The first one is, if someone is done with the syllabus and has solved a good number of questions in all three sections, what should be the strategy for the next five months? Basically a repeater. Uh, two things. One, I disapprove of the word repeater. So if you think you are fairly well prepared, then what should happen? And I will bifurcate this question into two parts. What should happen for people who are repeating and what should happen for people who are simply looking to revise? These are two different ideas and hopefully I'll address them appropriately as it should be done. First thing is, if you are fairly well prepared, you are, as in, there is no strategy for any part of the preparation. It's as good as saying, once I've become a fairly good enough batsman, what should be my strategy for the next three months? Of course, there is no strategy, strategy per se. Basically, what you should be taking care of, basically what you should be taking care of is, don't go out of practice. Try different things that you potentially can within the tests and mocks that you take. You want to change up the order of you attempting questions. You want to try round one, round two, round three in your sectionals uh, for quant. Within LRDI, you want to uh, identify six question sets first or four question sets first or whatever comes first. Basically, it is not so much a strategy as fine tuning of what you think already works for you. Given that you're already at an advanced stage, the expectation would be all your experimentation, all your testing would happen within the next one and a half, two months. And in the last three months, you know what exactly you have to do. And then basically it should be, become a part of your muscle memory that, okay, this is happening. So this is my reaction. This is happening. This is my reaction. We can only prepare for certain eventualities. There can always be outcomes that are beyond our control. But the more you practice, the more you put yourself in uncomfortable situations. So stuff like going to the center to take the mock or taking mock at three different time slots, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening, like cat has been holding three different time slots. You can try all those things. You can try all those things. And in the last three months, basically pick up random questions, whatever area you identify as a weakness, whatever area you feel you need to work more on, pick up questions. So every week, every week you should, for an advanced student, every week you should be attempting roughly two mocks and in the interim period between one mock to the other mock, if you identify some area that requires immediate attention, you go back and do a lot of questions in that topic, not necessarily of the same type, but anything within that topic is good enough. There shouldn't be any areas that you are outright rejecting. Okay, I TNC is bad. I will not attempt it at all. Or algebra is bad. I will not attempt it at all. Or games and tournament sets. I am never able to figure out. I will not attempt it at all. If you if you are not comfortable with basics of everything, then you are not really an advanced student by any stretch of imagination because you don't know which area is going to have a higher weightage in the actual exam. It is a very popular uh, dictum right now that arithmetic is good enough for you to cross your cutoff. Uh, completely ignoring the fact that if you're only focusing on arithmetic, then it is highly unlikely you're going to do very well in CAT. Because arithmetic within itself has a lot of elements of other areas thrown in. Additionally, if at all you're starting off with the idea that I will only do arithmetic, basically you're admitting you're not very good at quant. And then with all difficulty level of questions coming up within arithmetic, it is highly unlikely you're going to be solving all of them. So make sure you're comfortable with everything. Don't reject any subject area outright. Additionally, uh, for most people, this is more biased towards uh, people who think they're well prepared for CAT because they're doing well in quant and LRDI. BARC happens to be a section that people tend to ignore because reading they don't get scores yet they keep ignoring it and then the funny thing is they eventually end up with the conclusion BARC is a matter of luck if you end up scoring well great if you don't end up scoring well okay it was a bad day it was unlucky for you see it is as good as saying if a batsman scores a hundred yes I did all the practice I did all the work if I get out, oh, it was my unlucky day. See, you cannot guarantee a good score in every test, but you can, of course, give yourself the best chance by making sure that you are practicing for all the weaknesses that you have in your game. 
for instance if saurav ganguly you see why why do we as in, i don't know if it is a, a universal opinion but personally i think rahul dravid was better than saurav ganguly as a batsman for the simple reason that there were no discernible chinks in the armor for dravid whereas when it came to ganguly you knew that he was susceptible against the short ball so the b- bowlers targeted him with that and throughout his career he never really overcame that weakness he was a great batsman he did wonderfully well this is not a slight at ganguly but then he never really overcame that weakness don't be ganguly be dravid dravid is the best person dravid was in my humble opinion dravid was even better than sachin but then let's <laughs> that is our discussion for another day so this is all for the advanced people take the test experiment with different things identify if there is some area that you have completely ignored so far go back do questions from them after all your experimentation identify what works for you what doesn't work for you keep reading newspapers make sure you are not skimping out on the work for varc section because that is the section people like skimping over the most please don't do that rest i think because you are an advanced student uh, life would be fine the other question was about as in the other question that is not present but i created for myself was how to do revision if you are attempting for the first time or even if you are repeating you did not really prepare adequately for the first time so if you are studying if you are part of some classes you are part of something somewhere ideally what you should be doing is attend you have attended those classes after attending those classes hopefully you have made notes hopefully you have made notes so you should ideally be referring to those notes if uh, see class happens let's say class happens on day 1 you should go back and revisit your notes on day 3 after two days you should go back revisit your notes see if everything makes sense if not uh, escalate it straight away okay what is happening here i don't understand either your study group will help you or the institute that you are enrolled with will help you one week later go back to it again one month later go back to it again and once everything is over once everything is over you should be in a position that you are able to recall you are able to recall most of your notes without needing to look into them this is the biggest challenge that happens when it comes to revision people understand the questions people are unable to recall setups people are unable to recall what logic is to be applied so for that a 3 day period a 7 day period a 1 month period everything that you are studying 3 day 7 day 10 uh, 1 month you should be revising that and i'm specifically talking of qa right now i'm specifically talking of qa right now because uh, once uh, once you are done th- that is the only section that uh, in any way requires some sort of revision dilr and varc are unique in their ways that once you are da- over the hump there are very few basic repeatable setups that happen there in qa you have a lot of repetition happening in varc and dilr every new question every new passage brings up its own challenges so it is more a matter of skills in qa also you need skills but still you can game the system a little by practicing a lot more which is also the reason why people spend inordinate amounts of time practicing qa completely ignoring dilr and varc because waha pe har question ke andar alag dimag lag raha hota hai so don't do that it would not be advisable uh, revision wise 3 days 7 days 1 month keep revising it okay let's say your entire syllabus is over and now you want to go back and revise and everything please don't waste time watching videos of classes all over again it may seem like a productive activity but it gives you a false sense of achievement because watching a video is not is not you actively engaged in an activity for the first time if you are passively engaged you are re- uh, receiving information you are re- making notes that is fine for the second time if you have to watch the video all over again then it it takes up a lot more time than usual and it doesn't give you the sort of returns that you would expect so definitely not advisable don't watch the video try to recall your notes without looking at them if you can great if you can't have a look at them go through the 3 7 3 day 7 day 30 day cycle over and over again and given that uh, you'll be closer to cat by then so 3 day 7 day 10 day 3 day 7 day 10 day keep revising it and that is all that should happen in the qa section in varc and dilr go through all the basic setup once that that revision should not take more than 7 to 10 days per area and after that get your head down solve lots and lots of lots of sets 
as I think in the previous uh, uh, video I had stated, you should have attempted at least 100 sets by the time you take your first mock. And when I say 100 sets, I mean 100 sets outside of your classroom setup, outside of mocks that you're attempting, sectionals that you're attempting, 100 sets not within the test that you're taking. Within the test, you're not really trying to get, uh, you're not trying to really ace the section. Within the test, you're trying to maximize your score. In order to learn about the section, there should be untimed, unfettered practice happening for at least 100 DILR sets before you actually start taking mocks. Finally, uh, then you should be getting into the questions for DILR sets and VRC. By the time CAT rolls around, you should have done close to that is my perfect that is my estimate and you can perfect you are a complete liberty to disagree with me you should have done upwards of 350 to 400 rc and upward to 350 to 400 uh, dilr sets not every dilr set needs to be amazingly difficult one of the bigger challenges that i've seen is once people start doing dilr they become so fascinated by tough sets that they completely start ignoring the possibility that sets can be easy also. Please make sure you don't get too overawed and too engaged with tough sets because tough sets, while they are awesome, they are not really the only kind of sets that are available. There are also simple sets available. So you, your brain needs to be able to identify what is tough, what is difficult. More often than not, what happens with people within DILR is because they practice only tough sets, when the actual exam rolls around and every slot will definitely have at least one very, very straightforward set. People are always looking for some sort of trap. Okay, this question will have this, which will make it difficult. This question will have this, which will make it difficult. Not every question is difficult. Please also practice simpler sets. That is also important. Okay, that takes care of the first question. The second, the second question is included solely for me to <laughs> have fun. How to increase attempt rate and not let it affect accuracy? This is especially a challenge in VA where I try to attempt all 24 questions and I end up getting 7 to 10 incorrect. VARC is my strong suit and I want to hit that 99 percentile, which is net 14 to 15 questions correct. Whew. So basically, the question is, Basically, give me the best of everything without... And this is <laughs> give me the best of everything in a form that doesn't require me to engage in effort, not really not working. If you want to score a century in every match, you have to practice inordinately hard and yet you cannot guarantee you will score a century in every match. You have to have to ensure that you are practicing a lot. At the same time, see, not every player plays the same way. Virender Saiva can probably score at a strike rate of uh, 80, 90 within test matches, and that was his game. Rahul Dravid, on the other hand, scored at a strike rate of 40, 50, and that was his game. And both of them were extremely good players. So having this idea that I have to attempt all 24 questions, that is not really ideal. Which also bleeds into the other idea. There are far too many people trying to chase after speed. Speed as an idea, as a target, is not something you will get by chasing after it. It is an incidental outcome of you having more confidence in your abilities. It's like, I'm sure most of us know how to ride a vehicle. The first day you were riding a vehicle, the second day you were riding a vehicle, the first entire week that you were riding a vehicle. Was speed really your target? Of course it wasn't. Your target was, let me not make mistakes. Then along the way, when you became more proficient at it, without even realizing it, you started driving faster. There was no specific date on which you decided, okay, from today, I'm going to drive fast. And that is how speed works in all contexts. Right now, if you're, when people engage in stupid things like, let me do speed maths calculation, or let me do speed reading, or let me do all sorts of funny things, none of those things actually ever help. At least in my experience, it doesn't help. In my students' experience, it doesn't help. But what does help is, when you go through the exercise repeatedly, when you go, when you solve a lot of RCs, when you solve a lot of questions, when you solve a lot of DILR sets, your judgment about sets improves, your judgment about what the passage is trying to say. What also bleeds into this is, let's say you read a passage and you don't know about it. There are areas that you are unsure of. 
okay let's go back and research a little bit more about it so that we are familiar with the jargon and the next time i read anything from that topic i am able to comprehend it appropriately additionally uh, let's say you end up attempting only instead of the 24 questions you end up attempting only 19 questions right now if i take your best case example best case example 24 questions and seven incorrect and i am assuming all seven to be causing minus ones so you would get 17 correct and minus seven you would end up with a 44 you would end up with a 44 which is net 14 15 questions correct which is what you wanted even if we went on to 24 uh, out of 24 10 were incorrect 14 correct and 10 incorrect now the problem would start to arise you would get to 32 which is not net 14 15 questions correct would it not be better instead of targeting 24 questions let's target the maximum number of questions i can go without which without which uh, uh, while attempting which my accuracy doesn't go down the drain so if i am attempting only 19 questions and i am getting four wrong wouldn't that be a much more uh, preferable outcome or if i am attempting 20 questions and i am getting only four wrong wouldn't that be a much more preferable outcome don't walk in with the expectation i have to attempt all 24 questions because this is my strong suit your strongest suit may be the most difficult section and then you might end up doing poorly in the exam don't have expectation with regards to questions this is such a this is a very bad mindset to have the question i can understand where it stems from because this is popular wisdom but to whoever asked this question please get your head out of this thought you don't have to attempt all in order to get a good score you have to attempt what you can potentially ace it at you can probably refer to the earlier answer wherein i was talking of uh, try out different strategies try out different cycles in which you are attempting maybe that helps you reach a level which in which you identify okay what what i can attempt and what i cannot attempt uh, last word of caution if you think you are getting see the mocks sadly the mocks are far more difficult than the actual cat especially in the varc section uh, in one year i think 2018 i think the varc section was slightly tougher than the other sections after that year all mocks all mocks have turned into such wonderful cornucopia of difficult questions that the answers cannot be justified so if you are judging yourself solely based on mocks i would also say relax you are not that worse off actual cat questions are going to be far more manageable last question do we have to revise mocks after some time if yes how uh, revise mocks no but if you've seen the uh, how to do analysis video there is something called repository that you would make repository especially for dilr and qa the repository questions you should ideally be visiting every 15 days and trying them over and over again if you are able to solve them without external input this time then yes that uh, that question has served its purpose if you are if you are still uh, needing to go back and look at the solution and only then do you understand what is happening there then it is a challenge and that question should remain in your repository that will be all for this episode of preparation parley hopefully i answered some of your questions that you enjoyed that will be all okay bye